Hello again. During the last video we had a look at uh, node properties, materials. I forgot to mention that uh, in the next versions of Unigine there's going to be a visual material editor. The materials, there are a number of uh, materials in Unigine uh, that are, in my opinion, more than sufficient. But there has been a request for, you know, um, an, ed an editor for materials. And uh, it's coming. It's coming, I would say, early next year. You can still code materials yourself, if you feel like so, using their own shading language. It reminds me a lot of early Unity material system, where you had you, their own language. Okay. Now, in this episode, we'll go a little bit deeper in what happens uh, under the hood of uh, Unigine, looking at Assets, runtimes, and source. So uh, here is my presentation. Here we go. Yeah. So in Unigine, as you might have understood, everything is a node. It's not only a game object in the unit in the Unity sense, uh, but it's more than a game object. If you come from Unreal, it would be called an actor, and. Uh, but there are a number of built-in node types, so nodes that are uh, de you know, derived from the node object. If you look at the documentation, the API, this is what you'll find out, but uh, have more functionality, such as a camera, the mesh that we saw, but there is also nodes for uh, space, uh, volumes, uh, nodes for uh, water, clouds, so pre-made nodes, and you can actually do your own nodes uh, extending them with properties. Then there is those custom node types or components, very much like Unity or Unreal. So you can create an actor component in Unreal and basically a mono behavior in Unity. And this is uh, how you actually slowly compose your game. What in Unity is called a scene and or a level in Unreal is actually a world file. But in world, so it, normally you can have uh, a, many worlds in a game, as many as you want. If you want to have very large worlds, you could use, you know, groups of nodes, which are called layers. So layers are groups of nodes. We saw them, them briefly uh, in the previous video. And uh, what are prefabs in Unity are node references. Very similar. You can also explore, expand a node reference into an object, so you can actually modify it in the world. We're going to look at, under the hood, how it works. So, under the hood, as we saw, everything is in XML. We'll go to the editor in a second. But there is also binary assets, textures, sounds, and uh, some directories that uh, I want to show you uh, briefly. Runtime files, GUIDs, uh, meta files, we saw that already, node property files. And I'll show you briefly how to actually very easily implement a modding support uh, in your game, which, as you might know, is very complicated to do in uh, Unity or in Unreal. Uh, when I'm talking about modding, I'm mentioning, you know, changing the texture, changing uh, an object behavior. Uh, you have a way to limit that, absolutely. You can uh, create binaries with all your XML files and assets that will not be, uh, those are zip files uh, that will not be open, uh, able, where the user will not be able to open them. And uh, we will also work, uh, look at working outside components, which is a very, very powerful feature of uh, Unigine. But let me go back. I'll just, I'm just switching and going on too fast. So going back to our project, which we have here, you remember we have this world, which is uh, which where we created, I mean, those assets I created before the tutorial and uh, the hats we created together. But what happens under the hood? So let's go to the green hat. And we see it, this is a node reference that goes into a node, okay? 
you have a number of things. You can create landscapes, water, and thing. One, one thing, I, I want to do something very briefly because I will need it later in the tutorial. I'm going to create, a, many people do that, a global, global water. Just put it here. Okay. And now we have this nice water. Let's just drop it below the level of our thing. And look what happened. We have a beautiful ocean. I know this impresses a lot of people. So we have a beautiful ocean here. And this is actually water material. And it goes deep into the ocean. And you can set a lot of parameters in the water. You can change the material of the water. For example, you go into material, water material. Let me see where it is. Water. Now there was a view for it. Okay, uh, I, let me see. I want to do a very, okay, let me create a child material for my water and then I'm going to replace it. For example, this is the view for is the strength of the water, okay? Let's do that. And you see now the water is more uh, wavy. Got to go here because what, what happens is that we have the, the under, underlying thing, okay? And nice thing about it is actually you have caustics so if i go there and i actually emerge from the water i'll have to see okay i'm going the wrong way but uh, so here is my world i think and we have those nice caustics you know and i can even go beaufort 9 which is very heavy water and this will go over my objects and everything is actually washed okay that's kind of nice obviously this is not the perfect scene to display water I just wanted to show you that uh, water is also a node in a way that is its own transform which is not needed in that case but I well it's needed to maybe go down and put the water down and go up and submerge everything in the ocean let me show you the caustics as we go and so if I go down water in a, okay, let me just change the camera speed here very brief, quickly. And so you see, I have all these nice caustics and my objects are there. And let me see what happens if I hit play. If the object actually fall, okay, I have my screen on the other side. My hearts are still there, and the objects are actually moving. Okay, you can have, you can have floating objects. Uh, this is not the goal of the tutorial, but you can see how nice the scene is. And I can fly over just okay, shift E. No, I, oh, because I have a first person thing, I might you know go upstairs and exit the water. Let's see what happens. Let me try the physics. How did it fall? Okay, now it's my curiosity. Anyways. Object or global, global. We we'll leave it here because I want to briefly show you something later on. We we'll just drop it here and change the water view for to zero, which is so is a nice flat water. Okay, as we had, and we save that for a second. Okay, uh, I need that because I, I will show you, you know, the loading worlds in a different way. So this is our world and we have our objects here this flash is probably the water thing I don't know uh, probably some reflection issue with the water let, yeah, let, let me remove them okay just remember this is the level where we have the hats because we're gonna use it later okay now uh, so we imported those assets but what happens under the hood as, I say, as you know, everything is a node, okay? So I'm going to go back to the green node, the green hat node, showing the browser. And uh, here, uh, you can actually open in uh, Explorer. And you see I have this node. And I showed you that before. This is actually an XML file, okay? And there is the FBX file, which is here, which is the FBX itself. 
In fact, I could cancel this FBX file and the node will still show. I can even go in and cancel all the texture and the node will still show. Why is it? It's because of runtime files. So the way Unigine works is, first of all, whenever you input an asset, it will give you give it a GUID, like Unity does, like a unique identifier. This allows you to move things between, you know, within your project without losing references around. It also has a GUID DB, which is a database. This is a functional DB that is mostly used to uh, have a quick access to the files. If you cancel it, they're gonna it's going to rebuild it. But the interesting part is it creates a runtime file, so which is a file which is actually used by the game. So the node, if I look back at the text, it says I have this surface, okay, and I have uh, a number of, uh, if I look at the material, I'm sorry, if I look at the material, where is the material for this one? So this is my node, safety app green, I'm going to edit, looking at the material for the node, which you remember is here, safety head green, and I look at the material here. Uh, I, yeah, I just moved it in the materials, and I look, I show, it, I show this one in Explorer, and I go and edit with Notepad, is an XML, and uh, it has a number of parameters. Okay, no, that's a, that's a child material. Let me go to the yellow material, one second, because I want to show you something uh, so this one, show an explorer, look at the file, I love looking at the file, you could do that in Unity. Okay, this is what I wanted to see. There is a texture name which is GUID and the text is shading and things. So basically what happened, uh, he has a GUID uh, which is the, where the, the universal identifier of the texture, okay. but. You would be surprised because this is not the actual texture. Okay, what happens behind the hood is if I look at this file, which is the safety at albedo, and I say, okay, show in Explorer will open me open the texture I imported. Show runtime in Explorer will actually show me the asset that has been generated by Unigine in a format which is DDS. Okay, so Unigine creates those assets for us, and you could. And, and saves them in this directory under data. So Unigine project, when you open a Unigine project, within your project, you'll find all those files. So this is the project file, this is the solution file I created, and I'll, uh, I'll, we shall explain when we go into the Visual Studio part. The data is where everything is in, and there is this runtimes, which is this thing where all the, file, the runtime files are. Okay, so if you uh, want, you can, with, it, with your content creation software, create the DDS files and uh, you will not need to, uh, it will not do that. I mean, it will keep the DDS file and use your DDS file as original. One, for example, if you want your file uh, to be uh, your project to be easily moddable, what you can do is instead of having a TIFF that then goes into a DDS, either import directly the DDS files or go go to the runtime in Explorer. You see it here. You you drag it back here. Okay, and it says okay unchanged. Now it's it's and I called it. Safety hat DDS, so that we know it's a DDS because the, the, the extension will be a DDS and use this one in your material instead of the texture. So you won't have a DDS file. Uh, the way it works is actually when you publish a project, you can cancel all the FBX, the source file, since it will work on the DDS. Or if you just want a project like the one we're doing where you can mod, uh, you can link this DDS file and any user can open this with a, you know, a, a photo editing software. Many of them support DDS and change the texture or replace it and do things like that. Uh, and the same thing goes for the FBX. So if you look at the FBX, 
and you go here, you have this mesh file, okay? This mesh file, if I, it says show runtime in Explorer, because it has just a runtime, same thing. This is a mesh file which replaces the 3D geometry of your asset. And you could drag it there and use it directly, okay? If I'm looking instead at the safety app FBX, in fact, what it has is, if I show in Explorer this one, this is what is called a complex asset. Uh, it's not clickable, like it's not a directory, even though in the game you will see it as a directory. But in fact, it's just a node that contains information about the directory. Let's open the FBX file so that it's more clear, okay? Okay, well that's an FBX file, sorry, this is a binary. Uh, in the meta file, I have, okay, a number of informa information on the import. So it's kind of interesting to explore those parts. Uh, what I did in my project, since I wanted to have the original mesh files available, you know, I went here, I went to Show Runtime in Explorer, and it showed me the same thing, the same uh, DDS file. This, I, I, let me see, sorry, I, I did it here, show sure, runtime in Explorer and copy the mesh and, and then use it directly in the project. So you can also do that. So this is what's going on under the hood. I mentioned the um, um, node layer, okay? One way to organize your project is to create node, node layer you place and it would say okay give me a node uh, for this node layer okay and here you can either select a node no, or create a node no it's not here because I, I, I'm using it but in a different way but usually you create a layer from a node yes so you can create a node layer let's see if I can do it this way I have this node, now let me find something else. How did I do that? Let's say this one, dynamic, the static content, okay? Static content. It will ask me for a node. I, I don't remember how I, did, how I did that. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you basically start with the node and uh, uh, okay props hard hat <laughs> where is it uh, oh I'm in the texture that's right Place of node layer. Okay, now I'm placing it as a node layer, and uh, and in modification uh, I do to this node. Uh, it's actually it's a way to organize content because uh, once I have this node layer in the project, oh, this is the okay. I see, I just dropped all the nodes in the layer. And so if I switch off the layer, the whole thing will disappear. And it's, in fact, actually, it's a mini world that uh, uh, I'm actually overwriting now the brush node, which is not very elegant, but I should have done it differently. I should have created, um, let me do it the proper way, sorry guys. Okay, let me just move that away from the layer and take this node layer and delete it, okay? Then I'm gonna create a node dummy, okay, and I place it here, let's say, and I call this uh, my assets, okay, and uh, because this my assets is a, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna use it in other places, let let's me go here, for example, in the Unity assets, okay, I'm gonna drag it here, 
okay? And so I have this my assets node, which is an empty node, okay? And then I can the node layer from here using the my assets node. Place it here. So this is a node. Now I have uh, my node layer here. This is a reference to the my assets. I can cancel it. And in the layer, I have the my assets node, which was the old node. And uh, but I can put all my Unity assets in there, okay, and place it there. So this is my node. Uh, yeah, exactly. This is the my assets node, which is an empty node with all the things in there. Now, what? I, why is it useful? Because Let's say I'm going to use this in a different project, okay? I can place... I can use it uh, as a part of my level. So the whole level disappears here and it's there. It's a way to organize levels in sub-levels. Imagine you have a lot of assets, maybe a city within a large landscape. You can. I would put it in a load layer so everything is contained in there and I can make it disappear. Or I can even, you know, duplicate it and use it as a repeated asset, okay? And I'm just repeating the whole assets. Nice thing about the node layer is that once I get into the layer and I say, okay, now I like my green hat, which one is it? This is the safety hat. The, this is the green, where is the green hat? It's probably below here, I just messed the things up, okay? Yeah, I just put it here and then I just put the whole thing under the my asset thing so it's uh, cleaner, okay? under the yeah even under the node layer itself so you see i'm organizing the thing in a different way this is an empty node i have my green hat here and if i go and control d and duplicate it now i have uh what which one did i duplicate uh, now i duplicated the green hat Oh yeah, because that's a reference. Okay, this is one of the cases where you you might want you know to unpack to node content. So I just have the safety hat green, which is somewhere in here, and I duplicate, and now I have three and four, and maybe this one goes here and this one goes there. Okay, and uh, since it's all within the same node layer, and I save it. If I go to the other node layer, is that okay? <laughs> okay, I, I'm messing this thing up. I'm sorry, guys, because it goes goes reference to the same node, my assets node. Oh, because it's not under the my assets node. That's probably why I messed this thing up. Anyways. I'll come back to node layers in the next videos. I don't want, to, don't want to waste too much time with you on that. And uh, so it's a way to organize nodes. Let me go back to my presentation. I mentioned the uh, binary assets, mesh, texture, DS, sounds. Sounds, I don't have any sound example, but sounds, OGG sounds or MP3 sounds are saved as native in their format. So they, there is not a native um, format in Unigine. Okay. And uh, I mentioned the directories uh, and the uh, data source and bin, the meta files we saw that already. And I mentioned about the, the, the modding support, I mean, how to do it. Because the way Unigine is structured, since everything is XML, let's say I have uh, a car with a speed of 20, you could go and change the XML and do it 25 in an easy way. Or as you said, you can, save it in a, in a zip file so nobody can change it. The last thing I wanted to show you is the, the way it works. I'm sorry, I'm just checking how long this video is going. And it doesn't tell me. It's probably somewhere. Anyways. Um, is the the, run, uh, the um, core direct the, the source directory? So if you look at a Unigine project, I'm going to open my tutorial.
project. As I said, you have data, source, bin, okay, the, that's the binaries for Unigine and where actually your binaries will be built, okay. OBJ, which is some JSON files, uh, oh, no, it's the OBJs of the C-sharp project, I'm sorry. And uh, there is this source thing. Oh, and this is some C-sharp. It took me a while to find those, one, find those ones. And uh, this is why I, I would recommend that you actually use uh, Visual Studio. Because what I would do, I mean, what I did, uh, you open the solution in Visual Studio, okay? And at this point, you have access. I'm going to just move the... I already have it here. You in tutorial, it's open in Visual Studio. And you have a full view of your project. So, here is your data folder with the C sharp template, and you know the, the only component is the first person controller, which we saw in the previous video. There is my test CS here. And then you have those files, because in, in Unigen, you can actually create files uh, at a different level. So, for example, I could have a game logic file uh, saved in here. How do I do it? I'm going to go, you know, this one I'll do it in Visual Studio. Add new item. And I want to create a class. And uh, I'm going to call it my game class. And it's going to be saved here. And, in, and then I'm going to say uh, using Unigine. Fine. And here I have a string name. Okay. Let's say I, I'm doing this a static class. Okay. And I'm going to do a static string player name. Okay. Static int player score. Static. Now, when I go into my, uh, where is it? Data test file. Okay, I'm using Unigine. And I can say my game. Oh, I didn't public the thing. Hold on. Static public string, obviously. And public string, okay. And so I'm going back to my test here. Play your name equal whatever, Fred, 1D, and on update I would say score, play, uh, my game, player score equals uh, game, EFPS, I'm gonna increase it by game EFPS, Okay, no, it doesn't like it because this is an integer, it's a float. Let's make a floating score, I don't care. Clear score. And uh, in the test CS, yes. log message. And this is the way you actually score equals plus my game player score to string to make it nicer okay now let me see if ever okay it's gonna recompile in a sec open it doesn't all right it gives an error why build build solution and we find the error Usually you you have error in uh, okay now we liked it I think 
Mm. Let's launch the game. Let me see if I actually have my... Because I might have cancelled enough thing. Just let me put a new dummy here. Just to show, and we call it score. Okay? And we add a component, and we're gonna add from my data my test CS here. Okay, so it, it has a name, and okay, I'm gonna call it Fred, and the speed. Uh, obviously, that's the name I meant. It's not the player name, it's the name of the test CS component. And uh, if I hit play, it should run the script and show me the score. Now, if I change level, the score will stay. It didn't run the script because I say console. Uh, okay, I'll, uh, I have to say uh, console. I, I have to tell him to sh to to show uh, code from the console. That's just me. I never remember the code for that. Let me hold on a sec. And I'm, I'm looking into my other project. Just a second. So I don't, you know, lose a lot of time. Okay, yes, that's it. I'm gonna add a few things here. A Unijul console set integer means uh, use a console command. You can use a console as I did in the previous uh, videos to do things. In this way, I'm, I'm saying to the console, show me messages when I run the game, okay? And I can run it from here as well. So uh, it's gonna open in a different window, hold on. Uh, I just run it from the editor and still we don't see the FPS. Why is it? Okay, this video is going not as expected. Maybe I forgot to... It's nice because when you do errors... Okay, test name, CS, test CS, project build successful. And... Test CS is there. The score is there, obviously, because this is not the same world. This is word zero one, and the other one is word zero. So if I run from here, you remember we have this, okay, I, we have the score here, and it goes. And interestingly enough, the score is saved in my player. So if I do something like that, let me see, I'm gonna just do one thing, file, Recent world, I'm gonna open the old world, okay? And here I have a, maybe I just put my property, let me see, oh, those are dummies, player dummies. That's the other project, the one without the water, as you can see. And uh, I would uh, add a property here, and I'm gonna add my test thing here. And uh, now, before, if all well, if all goes well, we should see. I'm gonna. So this is called Unigine Tutorial World, and the other one is Unigine Tutorial uh, One. Okay, I just copy pasted in my thing. So now I'm running this one, and it's here. I'm sorry, it opens in a different windows, and you see my score is going up. Now I say, this is the console. You actually use the backslash to open and close the console. And I would say console world, world not world, sorry, it's console, I'm already there. World underscore load, Unigine tutorial one. And the score, if you see, continues from one level to the other. So you remember the do not destroy on load thing of Unity? You don't need that. It's already here. This is my console and I just keep my score from the other levels. I think this is interesting. Now, 
going back to Visual Studio. Now, let me show you briefly how we actually organized our project, which is a large project. Very quickly, I won't show you much of the things. So, you remember this file called App System Logic, okay? App System Logic is you have three core files in your project. Let me go back to your Unigen tutorial. Uh, oh, this is the console. Okay, this is the Unigen tutorial. You have, you know, upward logic, system logic, editor logic, which is basically logic for the editor, and system and word logic. Okay, all those you can actually subscribe to callbacks. Your own code can subscribe to callbacks. So. Basically, what I did in my project, this one, I have the, a number of static classes that uh, I say initialize when they get initialized and uh, update when they get updated and such. If I look at this class, okay, uh, in this class, for example, I'm loading some property files and user property files. This, uh, this is some syntax to load the properties and uh, it looks at, for example, user preferences. And uh, so you see all this is actually, this is my code for vehicles. This is my code for uh, static classes, event manager, and which is a manager for events. So I don't have to do callbacks every single call. Uh, I will explain this more in further tutorials. And this is my data classes where I have my actual mono behavior derived uh, in this case it derives from okay this one it's a component so you, you code into error you can code as component based as i'm doing here okay this is a component which has a number of properties uh, if you look properties you can do very complex things in this case i created structs which are available then in the editor uh, for controls, for rotors, uh, this is a complex project, okay? And then I public the animation struct and, and I get a fully featured editor in-game for my uh, parameters. So this is how you actually configure your components. And, uh, and here I'm doing some rotor animation and things. So you actually split the code between the two and it's a very nice workflow because then you have all your logic which is now this is a different project uh, or the logic that stays within the source code okay with even callbacks to the engine and all the component based logic you know that stays within the world and i think it's a very clean workflow so what i mentioned here i suggest you use visual studio 212 219 uh, use classes and code at the game level, as we just shown, a component for object behaviors. And then you can extend with DLLs, which is what I was doing in my other project. Uh, Visual Studio, you create a solution. Let's just, just a quick thing. And uh, if you want to load, uh, I mean, you have to be a little bit familiar, familiar with Visual Studio, but you can create uh, different uh, settings. So, for example, here uh, I created some different debug properties and usually when you create the first project it will create a main thing with the data path blah 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 and uh, here it says lo word load Unigen tutorial but in the other one it say word load, uh, word load Unigen tutorial 2. So, let's say I have my Unigen editor completely closed what I can do is, if I hit play from here, and if I'm lucky, it will open my world. There is no water, there is no, no assets at all. I'm closing that and uh, I'm going, oh no, okay, now I'm gonna, let me, let's say I, I don't have this open because this is not realistic. I have my test thing open. Uh, now I want to check in the other world. Uh, so in this one, I remember I, I just added and this one says world console command so i'm saying once you finish loading launch this console command uh, which is load world one world uh, and this in this case load the other world the one with the water okay 
So in order to do so, uh, I'm here. I want to I want to test the other world very easily. I just go here, hit play, and I should end up in the world with the water. Let's see if it works. I'm happy, and we are all happy. And I hope you. Oh no, because I cancelled the water. Yeah, but you have the assets. You have the helmets and the things and all the things that we saved in the world that were not in the world number one. Okay, so I hope, I mean, we're starting to get deeper and deeper into the engine. In the next tutorials, I'll show you how to do those very complex structures of uh, components and how to properly uh, write your code in Unigen. So I hope I, I, you enjoyed this lengthy video and see you soon. Thank you and bye-bye.